So the final four is set. Uh, we have got UCLA going up against uh, Gonzaga, which is going to be one of the largest uh, lines that we have seen ever in the final four in modern history. The other side of the equation will be Baylor going head-to-head uh, with Houston in effectively the battle of the state of Texas. And I think, and this has been my prediction from the get-go, not that I'm some college basketball savant, but what I've been telling you from the get-go was I think we're going to end up with the teams that were the two best over the course of the entire season. I think that we're going to have the Zags going up against Baylor in the championship game. And uh, and it looks like uh, Gonzaga may win another game by double digits because I think they will handle UCLA fairly easily. In fact, I think they already played the tougher team from L.A. and they handled USC with a great deal of ease. So positive here, we now have reached the Final Four and we aren't going to, I hope, have any major issues with COVID in either the men's or women's Final Fours now that we have managed to get to this point. I hope on Saturday we can play both of those games and then on Monday and we will have completed the larger essence of college basketball alongside of college football, and we will have done it safely. I teased a little bit. If you guys haven't heard about these, this is one of the most ridiculous stories that's out there. And by the way, I'm going to dive into the Zags and talk about their success at the top of the second hour and whether or not we are drastically underrating them because I think we are, and I'm partially to blame because usually when we have an undefeated team and we have an undefeated team that hasn't done something in nearly half a century, it is a massive story, and that is not the case right now with what has gone on with uh, Gonzaga, who is right now 30-0 and with 29 double-digit wins. It's pretty crazy to think about, but also pretty crazy to think about. Dub, I don't know if you saw this story. We wrote about it at OutKick. There's been a lot of interest in it in general. Lil Nas X, who had the uh, Old Town Road song, has decided, so they're evidently, I'm going to talk about this a little bit at the start of the second hour as well. You can customize sneakers. Have you ever bought a customized pair of sneakers? I remember back when I was a kid, I was a huge Brett Favre fan. And for my birthday, uh, I customized a pair of Green Bay Packers Nike Shock. So yes. How did you customize it? uh, On the Nike ID shop online. uh, You can do it there. Right, exactly. Okay, I, I've never customized any shoes. That's a little bit different. So I look at this. I get questions a lot from kids out there who are like in law school or they're in college and they're in sports business courses or they're in sports law courses and they're asking me for interesting storylines. To me, the idea of being able to customize shoes is one that should be explored and discussed in kind of an intriguing way uh, because – there is an interesting element to the question of, are you able to sell customized shoes, especially if you're doing it like Lil Nas X tried to do by trying to sell, and this is crazy, they were like Satan-inspired sneakers. And he wanted to sell 666 of the pairs in honor of Satan. And look, I think this is the dude just trying to get as much attention as possible. But if you are Nike... You don't necessarily want somebody coming around and trying to uh, delegitimize your overall brand in a way that would be offensive to a large number of people that are in the general public. And so Nike is now suing over the Satan shoes, saying, hey, we didn't in any way allow this. And there is a difference between somebody customizing one pair of shoes or doing it on a website because they want to do that and trying to do it in a larger scale where you have a limited edition of these sneakers. So this, to me, if you are a kid listening right now and you're in college or you're in law school or you're thinking about going, this is a really fascinating law review article. It's a great sports business review article. It's a great examination of trademark, patent, of copyright, of the value of a brand and how Nike is going to respond and what's going to happen with the lawsuit. And I don't know exactly but I am pretty fascinated by what exactly is going to happen. 